This is Mrs. K here with a discussion of photoautotrophic nutrition. Um, first, let's do a quick recap of how plants and animals get their food. Um, remember that light makes us food. Without light, you wouldn't have anything to eat. So if we didn't have light, you would have nothing to eat. You'd have um, no sugar, um, no beef, whether it's vegetables or meat that you're eating, you wouldn't have it. Um, there is a reciprocal relationship between chemoheterotrophic nutrition and photoautotrophic nutrition. Okay, you can see in our diagram here, um, we have our chloroplasts and our mitochondria. The chloroplast captures light energy from the sun, um, and it turns that light energy in combination with carbon dioxide and water into organic molecules like sugar, um, and or for example, like glucose. Um, and then our mitochondria, in turn, takes those organic molecules, it breaks them down through cell respiration and it turns them into energy, or ATP, and carbon dioxide and water. Okay, that ATP powers most of the cell's work, but some of that energy is not able to be captured and it is released as heat energy. So the inputs of one, so inputs of photosynthesis, are the outputs of the other, cell respiration. Okay, this accounts for the Curie's fact that if we look at the formula for photosynthesis, um, which is C, um, 6 CO2, so 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 H2O or 6 waters, yields C6H12O6, so a glucose or a sugar molecule, and 6 um, oxygen molecules. Um, but then if we look at respiration, the equation is flipped. So for respiration, we have a glucose molecule, C6H12O6, and six molecules of oxygen yield six carbon dioxide and six water molecules. Now let's talk a little bit about plants because plants are um, one example of an organism that do photosynthesis. So remember, plants are not the only photoautotroph. So um, plants are not the only thing on earth that do photosynthesis. So most of the oxygen in the atmosphere is actually generated by cyanobacteria, which are um, photosynthetic bacteria, and aquatic protists like algae. So plants really don't do most of the photosynthesis on Earth. Um, but they are one example of photosynthetic autotrophs. So let's look at where photosynthesis happens in a plant. So let's take a look at plant anatomy. So in plants, photosynthesis happens at the leaves. Okay, Leaves are the organs which are specialized for the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so here's our leaf here. So photosynthesis isn't mostly happening in the stem or the root. It's happening at the leaf. Um, at the leaf level, mesophyll cells are full of chloroplasts, the actual site of photosynthesis. So if we take a cross-section of the, our leaf right here and zoom in, we'll see that there's different layers of the leaf. We have an outer layer, or top layer, and a bottom layer. Um, if you'll note the little blue molecule, or um, not molecule, the blue um, item right here, these are guard cells. We'll talk more about them later. Um, we have a top layer and bottom layer, but it's the middle part. It's called the mesophyll. You see these green blobs? Okay, that's our mesophyll. The mesophyll is where photosynthesis really happens. Mesophyll cells are full of chloroplasts. I've represented chloroplasts right here as the little black dots. So mesophyll cells are full of chloroplasts, and that's where photosynthesis actually happens. It's the actual site of photosynthesis. So if we take one of these mesophyll cells and zoom into it, we can see that um, it has chloroplasts inside of it. And the chloroplast actually looks like this. Okay, This is just a rough sketch of a chloroplast, but you'll see that the chloroplast is more than just a blob with stacks inside of it. Okay, It has two membranes. It has an outer membrane, and then it has an inner membrane. Okay, Between those two membranes is called the intermembrane space. The structure is similar to a mitochondrion. So we have our outer membrane and inner membrane, and between those two is our inner membrane space. Now inside of the inner membrane are these stacks. Okay, These stacks, they look kind of like stacks of coins or stacks of pancakes. Um, these stacks are called a granum. Um, one is a granum, more than one is called grana. Okay, So each stack is called a granum, and each individual pancake or each individual coin in the stack Okay, it's called a thylakoid. Okay, so each little thing that's stacked up is called a thylakoid. Now inside of the thy thylakoid is a region called the thylakoid space. Now let's take a closer look at light because it's light that powers photosynthesis. So light equals energy. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Um, and we abbreviate electromagnetic as EM. So light is one type of electromagnetic radiation. It is produced by the movement of electrons between orbitals. So whenever um, electrons are moving from higher um, orbitals to lower orbitals, so higher energy to lower energy, they release light. Um, 
our visible light is just one tiny slice of the larger electromagnetic spectrum. So if this is our electromagnetic spectrum, it consists of gamma rays, x-rays, UV, then we have visible light, it's only that tiny little slice right there, infrared rays, microwaves, and then we have our radio waves. So our visible light is just one tiny slice of that electromagnetic spectrum. If we zoom into our visible light, we'll see we have different colors, and it turns out that the shorter wavelength, which are like our purples and our blues, have a lot of energy. They're very high energy. And then our longer wavelengths, um, which are like our reds, our oranges, and our yellows, have, are lower in energy. Um, now let's look at what actually captures light inside of a chloroplast. So the chlorophyll is a pigment that captures light. A pigment is any molecule that interacts with light or absorbs light to produce a color. Okay? So different pigments absorb different wavelengths of light, and the light that they don't absorb results in the color that you see. Chlorophyll comes in two main varieties. We have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And then we have other uh, pigments besides just chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is the main photosynthetic pigment, but it's not the only photosynthetic pigment found in chloroplasts. So our other pigments are called accessory pigments. Accessory pigments are other pigments that allow the chloroplast to absorb a wider range of light and protect the chloroplast from light-related damage. Um, and some examples of those accessory pigments are carotenoids and xanthophylls. Okay? So, um, chlorophyll absorbs some wavelengths of light but not others, and these accessory pigments help the chloroplasts to absorb other wavelengths of light. So it's just a little bit more efficient with those accessory pigments. Alright, now kind of for an FYI, a little interesting tidbit of information. Why are plants green? So sunlight contains almost all wavelengths of visible light. So it has blue light, green light, red light, purple light, um, orange light, and so on. Um, but chloroplasts do not absorb all the wavelengths of visible light evenly. Okay? They don't absorb all the wavelengths of visible light equally. Okay? When plants are exposed to light, chloroplasts preferentially, so they absorb mostly light in the blue and the red parts of this visible light spectrum. So they're mostly absorbing red and blue. That's why you don't see plants as being red and blue because that light is, is absorbed and not reflected by the plant. Chlorophylls have an absorption, absorption spectrum that is highest in the blue and red parts of the spectrum. Absorption, absorption spectrum is just an easy or simple way of saying this is the part of the visible light that they absorb the most. So their absorption, absorption spectrum is highest in the red and blue parts of the spectrum. Okay, accessory pigments expand the useful range of light, so they have absorption, um, uh, absorption spectrums that are higher in different parts of the visible light. Um, but it turns out that green light is still the least useful. Okay, so green light is absorbed the least, it's reflected back to your eye, and so what you see is that reflected green light, and that's why um, plants are green. Alright, so that's it for our introduction to photosynthesis. Stay tuned for part two.